What's up, YouTube? Good morning. Well, welcome to Hillside Harvest Homestead. And today we will be jumping into some beehives that were dead over the winter uh, due to primarily mites. Uh, since I wasn't able to get to them uh, in time last fall. Uh, back in Alabama, when I used to live in Alabama, I did bees for three years and it was totally different you know from the climate down there then coming all the way up to uh, Montana and uh, actually last year was the first year I was actually to have bees have bees since I was up here so it was a learning curve and I failed at it so we're gonna be starting over again this year but first I have to get these beehives and break them apart and clean out any dead bees and just tidy up things for when the new bees come, which should be here in a few weeks. Alrighty. Yeah, I usually keep these big rocks on top because we get some heavy winds every now and then. And I don't want my hives blowing over. This is the lid to the beehive, just in case you are a new beekeeper. I'm no expert on bees. I do enjoy them. They're very relaxing to me. Messing with them, and they're just an interesting critter. And um, this was just some burlap I put in to hopefully uh, and just an extra super. I just placed this in here for uh, in hoping that it would uh, wick up some of the moisture that would be created during the winter time. As the um, cluster creates heat, it creates condensation on the top lid and that condensation could drip down onto the bees and cause them to uh, freeze, get cold, and then they would die. And it would end up killing your uh, hive out also too. And this little box right here is just a queen excluder attached to a makeshift little shim so I can put um, some uh, sugar cubes on top which they didn't need because of course I failed but it looks like they did end up eating some of this before they died out but also I cleaned a little bit of these bees out of the bottom board um, as the fall went on because uh, I realized they were dying out a lot quicker than I thought they would. So there's probably not going to be a massive amount of bees because most of them I had raked out prior when I noticed that they had died out. I raked the bottom board out. So. Uh, this top box is practically full of uh, sugar syrup because I substituted them some, uh, it might have some natural honey in it, but most of it I consider just sugar syrup water, uh, sugar syrup honey. So I won't be using none of that to sell because I do put, uh, when I give them my sugar syrup, I'll put some uh, um, like mint and stuff in there and some tea tree oil and stuff like that to uh, help out with uh, mites and uh, tea tree oil is good for uh, uh, nosomia, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is a gut disease that they can get from holding their, uh, from uh, overwintering. And usually you can tell they have nosomias when they get the. Usually you'll see like a yellowish uh, gook on the front of their hives, which they can't hold it, hold their. Uh, uh, I guess what you consider their feces. Uh, so they'll actually, as they fly out of the hive, they'll just kind of like it. Just they'll lose control of it and they'll just uh, 
use it on the front of the hive so that's what usually the yellow splattering is but that's what that is why I do not use I will not harvest any frames that I use sugar water in but I will keep them for um, using to help feed the bees and if I don't need too much of it for feeding them then I will keep them for fall time so that's just less sugar water I have to give, give them but you can see that there's they have pollen packed in here too you can see the pollen right there pretty cool wish I still had them I don't really want to wait for having to get some more wish they were already out flying around but Let's just look through here and see what was happening. You can tell the queen, they were, did have some brood up in here before they died out. So they were making their way up to the top box. So there's a potential I could have actually took more honey than I needed to from them last year too. Cause it looks like they did have a large amount of brood. I thought this box was a lot fuller. I thought it was filled more with honey, but apparently they had a lot of brood in it also. Cause look at this. Where the colony had died and she had a lot of brood but I'm pretty sure they did die from varroa mites because when I was scraping the bottom box out there was a lot of varroas on the bottom board coming out with them and I can still see uh, you see remnants of varroa in the cells This queen did have a lot of eggs in this one too. There's a lot of dried up eggs. You know, it's sad when a beehive dies because you failed them. You know, the whole purpose is to help the bee population. Not kill them off. You live and you learn. Also, I do use a uh, plastic foundation. That is a. Uh, and they. I, you know, some people say they don't draw too good on the plastic foundation. But I haven't had any problems. But I also do make sure that the plastic foundation does have a good coat of wax on it before I give it to them. So. because they need that layer of wax to be able to draw, start drawing out from. If you just put it in and it don't have no wax on it, they're less likely to draw. Draw their comb. But they did still have a good amount of honey in here. Some of this is crystal crystallized that's open. They did have a nice brood before they died. And it looks like everything else is just full frames of honey. Besides this outer one, which actually has some bees on it. <coughs> and when I do get my new bees, I'm getting nooks. Which y'all will see because we will videotape that. <coughs> but you can tell, see, this has some of the dead bees on it. But like I said, most of them had fallen to the bottom board and I had already 
clean them out and I had found where the dead queens were in each beehive so all right so that was their upper brood box I want to lick my hands right now because it has honey on it but I know it's just sugar water all right so this is the bottom bottom brood chamber and these right here are both called considered deep brood boxes and see, they didn't even get the draw the outside of this one off. A little bit of honey. And... But what I'll do is I'll just come through and tidy up these frames, get all the as much wax and propolis off. So that it makes it easier getting in and out of the hives when you do your hive inspections throughout the year. These bees still had a pretty good, decent amount of honey. Oh man, look at that. That one was packed full of pollen. That will be a good frame for when I get my nooks. These nooks should take off really good. Packed full of pollen. That was just awesome. Look at that, all different kinds of pollen. They were just packing honey in on top of it too. Nectar, sugar water. that offline uh, y'all don't have to watch me do all of it I think you get the gist of it just cleaning it up tying it. cleaning anything that's uh an excess of honey and propolis or honeycomb and propolis I'm just glad the mice didn't get into it it's still too cold for wax moths so From the deep south that I'm from, from Alabama, you know, we deal with more things than up here in Montana because they don't have hive beetles out here, which is awesome because I hated messing with them. I still had some. Oops. Yeah. Sometimes things like that happen. Just don't let it happen with the bees on there. Because they would not like it. And here. This is some of the dead bees. And let's just say there was a lot more than this. Because I had cleaned this out too. I cleaned part of this bottom board out during the winter when I noticed they were dying out. But I'm pretty certain they died out from, uh, like I said, Varroa mites. And Varroa mites, the reason they die out from those are because um, they, uh, the Varroa mites get in the cells as the bee is uh, there and they create diseases 
and they do deformities to the bees' wings and all this. So the bromides uh, create diseases, which you know spreads around the colony and it kills them out. So if you don't get to your varroa mites in time, your winter bees will die out quickly. So that is something I had to look look closer at this year and make sure I get to the varroa mites before they get into the cells of my winter bees. And uh, so my winter bees go into the winter really healthy. And that way I won't be having to buy bees next year. But We'll just get these bees, shake them out here on the ground. You know, it's not really a proper burial, but. This right here is a bee brush. You can brush your bees off your frames and stuff. And I'm just using that. Clean this hive out with. We'll take off my entrance reducer that I put in. entrance reducer in the winter time and in the spring especially when your colony is a small colony it helps prevent robbing and it deaders other other things from trying to enter the hive just makes it easier for them to protect what is theirs but there are remnants of uh, varroa mites, which you will tell a varroa mite, it's like a red, really red, smallish, circular uh, little bug, looks like. I mean, they're probably just a little bit bigger than the tip of a pen, and uh, that's how you can distinguish them, and usually they'll be attached to the atom of a bee or somewhere around that region. And they're real easy to tell when they're on the fresh larva because the larva is white white and so you can really that uh varroa really stands out on those All I'm doing is just cleaning off some of this propolis where my frames sit at. That way it's easier to get my frames in and out. And this is just a hive tool I'm using. You can use anything. But, you know, hive tool just... To at least this hive tool is a lot easier. Nice sharp edge on it. All right, and so. I'll just go through these frames, knock off any excess propolis and uh, wax that I don't want, and just put this bottom box back together. And then the extra top brood box that I have, I will just store the honeycomb in there for uh, extra feeding if they need it and use for in the fall. So I will acquire less sugar syrup in the fall. So I'll just go ahead and do all that with both of these. and. Uh, will show what they look like when I get done the setup on it and then hopefully after that we'll have my bees in and we'll show you installing the nook that I'm getting.
you would like to help us out, just uh, hit that thumbs up button underneath this video as the camera's falling down. You know, we'll be doing more videos here shortly on the gardening. You know, spring keeps popping its popping in here every now and then. But like today, this is April the 24th and there's still a chance of snow tonight. So, we haven't yet gave in the spring has arrived yet here in Montana, so. And we just got some, uh, you know, a fair amount of rain here recently, so the garden's a little wet as it is to get into, and I still need to till it up once more. But I would love to get the onions in. Then the peas. Get some more asparagus in the ground. Also, we have, um, we got to do an add-on to the little barn that we have. We have to add another section onto it so we can store some hay in it. So, uh, it can be a lot closer to where the animals are at. And we don't have to keep the hay up close to the house. And, you know, it just make, makes everything look cleaner and it's more convenient. And it keeps the hay, uh, out of the rain. So... So we do have a lot more projects that we're going to do. That's probably the only one that's going to require wood because wood right now is expensive. So if we can't find wood that's just given away to given to us for free, or if we don't have it already on the homestead. We're probably not going to buy it. We'll wait to when it's at a more reasonable price. But we did buy it for this uh, add-on to the uh, barn because it's something we need to get done, get done with, and get it out of our, get it behind us. Because before you know it. You have vacations, and then the gardening, canning. So, quicker we can get stuff like this done in our downtime, then the easier it is on us when all that comes up. If you have any suggestions on videos you would like to see, like dealing with uh, goats, cows, uh, bees, you know, anything that you, you know, you're not for sure on and you would just like somebody to uh, go over with you, you know, let us know. We don't know, we'll do the research for you. Because you know what? It's always cool to learn more things about what you have. Get a better grasp on what you're doing. I mean, if you would like to do a uh, see a beginner's beekeeping series, we can do that. You know, I'm not a I'm not a professional beekeeper. 
but I do know some about these. how to keep them alive it's just uh getting my timetable down right on when to treat them in the fall for going in the winter and you know a good way is to uh like i've done since i uh, let my bees die out i have jumped on facebook bees I think were already hatching out and must have already been capped over when I jumped in the hive so it didn't really do much of a benefit for them as you can tell uh, and this burlap's good also in your smoker all right so just got everything wrapped up. I'm gonna finish putting this uh, last inner cover on. Already knocked out the purple beehive. So, put the outer cover on. And we'll put our large rock. And now all we need right now of a nook and also I'm getting two nooks but I'll also tell you how to uh, install a package of bees which is you know just a wired screen box with a can of syrup and it comes with a queen in a cage uh, you know I'll go over how to uh, use it too. but I just like the nooks they uh, already started laying they've already had their you know she's already started laying the hive you know with three pound packages they do have the potential for them to abscond on you which is they don't like the housing that you gave them so they end up leaving and finding a new home for themselves and at $150 uh, you know at whatever the price you pay for them you don't want that so I just prefer to go for 